Hajj Atiyah. May Allah bless you and bless your parents, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum jami'an wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala anbiya illahi jami'an wa ala seyyidihim wa khatamihim habibi ilahi alameen abil qasim al-Mustafa Muhammad. وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المحصومين سيما سيدنا ومولانا وقائدنا الإمام المهدي المنتظر عجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والسابقون الأولون من المهاجرين والأنصار والذين اتبعوهم بإحسان رضي الله عنهم ورضوا عنه وعد لهم جنات تجري تحتها الأنهار خالدين فيها أبدا ذلك الفوز العظيم صدق الله العلي العظيم In continuation of our series on the great women of mankind Tonight I'll speak about one of the companions of the Prophet A lady who was Sahabiyyah among the friends and companions and disciples of our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Obviously we know that without the contribution of those who were around the Prophet, whether family members, his immediate family, his daughter, his cousin Imam Ali, his children, or his loyal companions, so many of them were loyal to him. They believed in him, they supported in him, they stood with him. They sacrificed with him. لا يستوي منكم من أنفق من قبل الفتح وقاتل أولئك أعظم درجة من الذين أنفقوا من بعد وقاتلوا وكلا وعد الله الحسنى. The Holy Quran puts them in different categories. He says, the elite one among them are those who were with the Prophet from Mecca before the conquest of Mecca. The conquest of Mecca took place in the year 8th of Hijrah, just three years before the departure of the Prophet. But there were many people who stood with the Prophet from the early days when he was in Mecca, and they sacrificed. Among them are men and women. And among those women who is Sahabiyya, who has been praised by the Prophet himself, the Prophet praised her. And I would tell you how did he praise this lady. Her name is Nasiba, Nasiba bintu Ka'b al-Ansariya. Ummu Amara, her son, her son's name is Amara and Amara was murdered and he was martyred during the battle of Uhud. His mother was encouraging him to go forward until he died right before the eyes of his mother. So Um Amara and her name is Nasiba bint Ka'b al Ansariya. When the Prophet وسلم, was in Mecca inviting people to this new religion, it's ironic that many people in Mecca, they did not respond to him. But people of Medina, Yathrib, they did respond to the Prophet's call. And therefore, they used to come to pilgrimage. And pilgrimage did exist even before Islam. Pilgrimage is a very, very ancient tradition that started with Ibrahim and continued until today. So people used to come even polytheists, they used to come to pilgrimage. But of course, rather than worshipping God, they would place their idols at the top of the Kaaba. And there were many idols there. And they bow to them. They respect them. They pay, pay tribute to them. They sacrifice their animals on the altar for the sake of these idols. So some people used to come 
from Yathrib, from Medina, to Mecca for pilgrimage. And those people, they used to meet the Prophet wasallam. One year, a group of them came and they listened to him and they showed interest in Islam. The Prophet made an appointment with them. He said, go back to your community, invite people to Islam and come and meet me next year after the conclusion of the Hajj season. When Hajj is over, I will meet you in such and such place. So they came and that was known as Bay'atul Aqabat al-Ula. Bay'atul Aqabat al-Ula. About 70 men with only two women came from Yathrib. They did their pilgrimage and then they made bay'ah, allegiance with the Prophet. The Prophet came out and he met them outside Mecca near Mina. And the Prophet was accompanied by Ali ibn Abi Talib, alayhi salatu wasalam, who was young, very young at that time. And with his two uncles, Al-Abbas and Al-Hamza. So they met and they paid allegiance to the Prophet. All of them shook hand with the Prophet, accepting his message, accepting that he's the messenger of God and making a vow that they're going to support him. And one of the articles of that vow, that covenant that they made with the Prophet after the Prophet, Al-Amr here is leadership, the Khilafah. We are going to listen to the Prophet. We are going to remain loyal to the Prophet. Whatever the Prophet, whoever the Prophet appoints, after him, we're going to accept. We are not going to argue about that. And then among those 70, there were two ladies. So the man came... The husband of Nasiba came to the Prophet. His name is Ghuzya, Ghuzya ibn Amr, Abu Amara. He came, he said, Ya Rasulullah, among us there are two ladies also. They want to pay allegiance to you. So the Prophet welcomed them and they accepted Islam and they paid allegiance. One of them was this lady, Nasiba bin Tukab, and her friend, the other female friend, Umm Sabi' so they both paid allegiance to the Prophet and the Prophet asked them to go back and to preach this new religion to their communities when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam moved from Mecca to Medina there were some people who were waiting for his arrival some people who were already Muslims because they met him in Mecca. Others, they didn't meet him yet, but they heard about him and they heard about his message. So he had already established a community in Medina, even before his arrival. Among them was Nasiba. Nasiba was very active. Most women at that time, their job was to serve their husbands. And it's the same today and tomorrow until the day of judgment. Most women, they have to cook, they have to clean, they have to take care of the kids, you know. Most of the time, they have a 24-7 job, full-time job of taking care of the family. And some men, they are lazy, they don't work at home. They don't work. They are only expected to be served the food and all other services free of charge. And there are some men who are active, who are good. They help their wives. They stand with them. They help them. They are a good support to their families. They help their children with their homework. So Nasiba was a good mother, a good wife, and also a good member in the community. She was an activist. In today's language, she was an activist. Not only, not only assigning herself, not only assigning herself to her family and to her home, but also she was helping women outside. She was helping her community, trying to reach out to other women. She was not 
Some people are happy with what they do locally at home. Some people are not happy with that. They know the family is part of their duty, but then they have a bigger family, which is called the community, the society. They have a bigger role. Therefore, Nasiba was very active, working very hard, preparing the grounds for the Prophet Wasallam to come to Medina. And when the Prophet came to Medina, Ansar welcomed him. And in some stories we read that Imam Ali السلام, before he married Lady Fatima السلام, he had no place to live. He was single and he had no place. So he had to stay for some time in the house of this lady and her husband. This lady Nasiba, she hosted Imam Ali in her house and the house of course of her husband with her family before he got married to Fatima alayhi salam and when he married Fatima of course they had a house and you know the story of that house this house was only one room one room not one apartment one single room and then Quraysh were defeated in the battle of Badr but that defeat was very hard for them to take they could not come to terms with that big defeat that they received. وَلَقَدْ نَصَرَكُمُ اللَّهُ بِبَدْرٍ وَأَنْتُمْ أَذِلَّهُ God says to the Muslims, أَذِلَّهُ here means that you were weak. You didn't have power. You didn't have energy. You didn't have weapon. You didn't have food. أَذِلَّهُ means that you were powerless. But God scored a victory for you. وَلَقَدْ نَصَرَكُمُ Verily, God provided you. God bestowed this victory upon you. وَلَقَدْ نَصَرَكُمُ اللَّهُ بِبَدْرٍ وَأَنْتُمْ أَذِلَّةٍ Quraysh was defeated. Quraysh came to eliminate Islam. They gathered to defeat Islam, but they were defeated themselves. And because Quraysh was a tribal society, and in these tribal societies, many men and women are arrogant, they are arrogant. They don't resort to their senses. They do not resort to reason, to aql. The only language they understand is sword and power and blood. So they decided that since Muhammad وسلم, defeated us, we're going to strike back. We're going to teach them a lesson next year. And the leader of those who, who were defeated was Abu Sufyan. Abu Sufyan and his wife, Hind. Hind, the mother of Muawiyah. They both were de defeated in a very bad way, terrible way. So Abu Sufyan decided when they went back to Mecca and they lost more than 70 or 80 of their men during the Battle of Badr. It was a big tragedy for Quraysh. Nothing has happened before like that with this magnitude of loss and defeat. Nothing. This is the first time Quraysh is defeated with this a huge number. So Abu Sufyan said, no women have the right to weep for their dead ones, for their sons, for their brothers. You, don't have, you, you cannot weep. You cannot cry. You cannot lament your dead ones. Why? Because I want the hate and the grudge to be stored in your hearts so we take revenge from Muhammad and his community next year. Keep the grudge in your heart. Don't cry. Because you know when people cry, what happens? Huh? What happens? They release. They release. Yeah. yeah. They release some of the, some of the, uh, the energy that some people have, you know. Sometimes. Sallu ala Muhammad wa Muhammad. Yeah. Take it easy tonight. Take it easy, Habibi. Take it easy. Yeah. So, so he did not allow them to weep. And they kept this grudge in their heart. And next year with the 3,000 fighters, they left the city of Mecca. They said, we will march all the way about 400 kilometers to Medina to defeat Muhammad and his community and his entire followers. 3,000 
armed men marching from Mecca all the way to Medina to take revenge. So they came to Medina. The, the story is very long. And the Muslims were disputing whether we go outside Medina or we receive them while we are inside Medina. The Prophet said, I believe let's stay inside Medina. We know our neighborhoods, our streets very well. So we can ambush them. But the majority of the Muslims, they said, no, la ya Rasulullah, let's go outside. Let's go, let's receive them outside Medina. So the Prophet said, okay, because this is the opinion of the majority, no problem. I will follow the majority. Though he's the messenger of God, and he has the best reason, the best aql, the best wisdom and calculation, but he had to go with the voice, with the vote of the majority. And you know what happened in Uhud? In the beginning, Quraysh was defeated again, mostly by the sword of Imam Ali alayhi salam. But then the tama, the greed, the greed did not allow for this victory to conclude, to finish. Many people left their positions. They were standing on the mountain. The Prophet asked 50 of them, 50 of those fighters, not to leave their positions until I come and ask you to come down. Stay there to protect the back of the army. But when Quraysh was defeated, and you know at that time people will take their valuables to the battlefield. And Quraysh, they brought many of their valuables. And they brought Hind and some women as cheerleaders. Cheerleaders. Have you seen cheerleaders here in the NBA? Alhamdulillah, we had cheerleaders of Quraysh 1400 years ago, led by a woman called Hind, Hind the mother of Muawiyah. And history says, if you open any book of history about the battle of Uhud, you will find this sentence. يَضْرِبْنَ بِالدُّفُوفِ وَيُغَنِّينَ They beat the drums and they sing. So those were the cheerleaders that Quraysh brought to cheer their army, to encourage their army against the Muslims. But despite having cheerleaders and having weapons and having leadership, they did not have one thing. They did not have Iman. They were fighting not for God, not for human principles or human values. They were fighting for materialism. They were fighting for their pride, for their pride, for their arrogance. So in the beginning they were defeated. And fortunately those archers who were placed at the mountain, they they did not honor what the Prophet asked them to do. They did not honor their covenant with the Prophet. Forty of them, they left their positions because they saw the booties, the ghana'im in the field. And they said, by the time Muhammad, our Prophet, will come and say, come down, we will go and everything is over. We have to live with the leftover. And we don't want to do this. We want to have our share. So they left their positions. Forty of them. Only ten stayed there. They said, no, never. The Prophet said, stay here. We stay here until he gives us the orders. And Khalid ibn al-Walid, who was in the army of the Mushrikeen at that time, he was a smart. He realized that the Muslims, the, the Mushrikeen are running and the Muslimin, the Muslims are chasing them. And then he went behind the mountain with a handful of his army. He was waiting and watching what will happen. So he found that nobody is protecting the Muslims from back. So he made a U-turn around the, the mountain and he came this way. And then he started chasing the Muslims. So imagine the Mushrikeen are running. The Muslims are in the middle. Again, the, another battalion of the polyethist are behind them, chasing them. And when the polyethist in the front, they realized that Muslims being chased, they stopped. They stopped running. They came back. They had a counterattack against the Muslims. So the Muslims were squeezed in the middle. From that side and this side, 
the army of their enemies. And more than 70 of their men were murdered on that day, including the uncle of the Prophet, Hamza ibn Abdul Muttalib alayhi salam. Not only he was murdered, Hind, the wife of Abu Sufyan, the mother of Muawiyah, she came to his body and she started cutting his body into pieces because she wants to take revenge, amputating his limbs. And it was a big tragedy for the Prophet and for the Muslim society that day. This lady, Nasiba, she came from Medina for one reason in the beginning, to help the army. She brought with her something called a siqa. A siqa means the water container, the skin water container that they carried. At that time, there were no bottles today like this one. So Samir Amiri would not complain about them. So they had this big water container, skin water container. They would carry with them and they give water to the army. So she came with this purpose. But she said, when I saw Muslims are running, they are not with the Prophet. And this is in chapter 3. إِذْ تُصْعِدُونَ وَلَا تُلُونَ عَلَىٰ أَحَدٍ وَالرَّسُولُ يَدْعُوكُمْ فِي أُخْرَاكُمْ they left the Prophet. Only six or maximum seven people stayed with the Prophet. The rest of the army fled the scene. They started climbing the mountain of Uhud. Tus'idun. Tus'idun means they, you climb. Tus'idun wa la tulwuna ala ahadin wa rasulu yat'ukum fi ukhraakum. Your Prophet is calling upon you. Come back. Don't run away. God says, when you failed, he's talking to the Muslims in chapter number three. You did not have one voice. You started having fights among yourselves, a conflict among yourselves. From niza, conflict. And you disobeyed the Prophet. Remember this verse in chapter 3. God is saying to the Muslims at that day, the companions of the Prophet, the Sahaba, Minkum among you, men yuridu dunya. His intention is not the Akhirah, is not Islam, is not the Prophet, is dunya, materialism. وَمِنْكُمْ and among you, men yuridu al-Akhirah, whose intention is the hereafter. And we find this in every society in every community, in every country. Two types of people. Some of them, they look for the Akhirah, they work for the Akhirah, and some of them, they are attached to the dunya. And this is a verse in the Quran. Don't forget this verse. Min kum, men yuridu dunya, among you those who love and are fascinated by this life, the worldly life, wa min kum men yuridu al-akhirah. This happened during the Battle of Uhud. So this lady, she said, I saw the Muslims are running away, leaving the Prophet, and the Prophet was about to be killed. He almost died, the Prophet. He was heavily injured. His forehead, his head, his chest, he was bleeding. And he fell down, the Prophet. He could not stand. And those battalions, one after the other, they, they aimed at him, to murder the Prophet, and Ali ibn Abi Talib was standing there. Whenever an, a battalion attacks, the Prophet says, Ya Ali, ikshifha anni, clear them, clear them away from me. And Ali was running around the Prophet until his sword was broken. He came to the Prophet, Ya Rasulullah, in the Sayfi qad inkasar. Jibreel brought a sword, and Jibreel raised his voice and cried, لا فتى إلا علي لا سيف إلا ذو الفقار. Jibreel came to the Prophet said, Ya Rasulullah, look at Ali. Ali, he puts his life in danger to protect you. The Prophet said, of course, لأنه مني وأنا منه. We are of each other. He is of me and I am of him. Jibreel said, وأنا منكما يا رسول الله. And I am among you, O the Messenger of God. 
And this lady, Nasiba, men are running. A lady is standing with her sword defending the Prophet. Read the history. Only seven people, six, some historians say six, some say seven, stood there. The entire army left and they were running away, including the first caliph, the second caliph, the third caliph. Some of them did not show up until three days. Until three days, they were running. They never showed, showed up. Read the history, my friends. Many Muslims do not know about their history. They don't know. They don't read the history. Uthman ibn Affan was on the run for three days. When he came back, the Prophet was laughing. He said, Uthman, everybody came back the same day. The following. It took you three days? He said, yes, Ya Rasul, of course. It's, it's, it's the war. I can't. Can you imagine? And Ali puts his soul and himself online. Ali ibn Abi Talib. And this lady, Nasiba, she called upon her son. Amara, her son, was about to run away too. She said to him, Amara, come here. Come back. Come back. This is a matter of life and death. We have to protect our leader, our messenger of God. You have to stay and fight. So he was listened. He listened to his mother and he stayed and he was defending the prophet until he was killed. Right before her eyes. And she didn't care. A mother, when she loses her son, she collapses usually. She sits and cries. She goes to salvage him, to rescue him, to take him to evacuate him from the battlefield. She didn't do that. She said, I have to protect Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She continued fighting and she was overwhelmed with wounds and injuries from head to bottom. She was bleeding, but she was fighting. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said this sentence. Listen to the sentence. Listen to the appreciation of the Prophet to this lady, to Nasiba. He said, لَمَقَامُ نَسِيبَةَ يَوْمُ أُحُدْ خَيْرٌ مِنْ مَقَامِ فُلَانٍ وَفُلَانٍ The standing, the sacrifice, the giving of this lady Nasiba on the day of Uhud is much greater than the standing of Fulan and Fulan who run away. The Prophet appreciated her. And until Alhamdulillah, the Prophet was saved and slowly, slowly the rest of the companions who fled, they came back, they protected the Prophet, but unfortunately they gave over 70 of their men in that battlefield. And you can visit their graves in a special cemetery. When you go to Uhud, the land of Uhud, there is a special cemetery that contains the bodies of the martyrs of Uhud and also some of them who were wounded and evacuated and died later on. They were brought to Medina and they died later on. They are buried in Maqbaratul Baqi'ah. Not only her role did not end here, the role of Nasiba in Uhud. She continued fighting in other places. In the battle of Khaybar, she went to Khaybar. She went to the conquest of Mecca with the Prophet. She went to Hunayn, one of the last battles in Islam. So she partook in all these battles protecting Allah protecting the Prophet, protecting the Muslim community. This is an example of a hero. A lady who was good mother, good wife, good sister, and good fighter too. Good fighter. She did not relinquish her role. She had two major roles. One is inside her house taking care of her family. And second, outside the house, taking care of her religion, taking care of her religion and her community. Allahumma khfar lil mu'minina wal mu'minat. Tomorrow, inshallah, I'm going to speak about a lady who's non-Arab. She's from Persia. I'm not going to tell you her name. Tomorrow when you come, inshallah, at 9.15, and we begin at 9.35 p.m., you're going to listen about her incredible story of this lady who came from the heart of Persia 
and she serves Islam and she serves the family of the Prophet My friends, Zakatul Fitr is $15 per person. Inshallah, Monday night, we're going to go for moon sighting. If we see the moon with naked eyes, then Eid is going to be Tuesday. If not, we don't receive the news of moon sighting on Monday night, then Tuesday is Ramadan, the last day of Ramadan, and therefore Wednesday is going to be the day of Eid. So we will announce that Monday night because some people asked me yesterday and today about the Eid. I really don't know. A lady came to me, she said, can you make the Eid on a Tuesday? I said, I wish I can, but I wish I can give you some discount, but you know, it's not in my control. So please be patient. We fasted more than 29, 28 days. So it's, it's either one or more two days. You are not going to lose anything, inshallah. Allahumma khfar lil mu'mineena wal mu'minat wal muslimina wal muslimat al ahya'i minhum wal amwat tabi allahumma baynana wa baynahum bil khayrat. We have a friend very dear friend to us, very, very special friend in the community. He's going to have a surgery tomorrow. So please raise your hand. Let's pray for him. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Amman yujibu al-mathtarra idha da'ahu wa yakshifu al-su'u. Amman yujibu al-mathtarra idha da'ahu wa yakshifu al-su'u. أَمَّنْ يُجِيبُ الْمُضْطَرَّ إِذَا دَعَاهُ وَيَكْشِفُ السُّوءَ أَمَّنْ يُجِيبُ الْمُضْطَرَّ إِذَا دَعَاهُ وَيَكْشِفُ السُّوءَ أَمَّنْ يُجِيبُ الْمُضْطَرَّ إِذَا دَعَاهُ وَيَكْشِفُ السُّوءَ يَا اللَّهُ مُنَّ عَلَى مَرْضَانَا بِالشِّفَاءِ وَالْعَافِيَةِ الْمَرِيضَ الْمَنْظُورَ اللهم ألبسه ثوب الصحة والعافية وعجل في فرج سيدنا ومولانا صاحب العصر والزمان اللهم كن لوليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلة واجعلنا اللهم من أنصاره وأعوانه وإلى أرواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات ثواب الفاتحة مع الصلاة على محمد وآل محمد